The BBC presents Tony Hancock with Moira Lister, Bill Kerr and Sidney James in... Hancock's Half Hour. Yes, this is the first night of the lad's new radio series. Such occasions are usually marked by a small celebration of some sort, but Tony Hancock is really doing it in style. He's going to throw a cocktail and dinner party. So let's go over to Tony's flat in the English quarter of London's West End, where he and Bill Kerr are making the arrangements. Hurry up, Kerr. Haven't you finished typing out those invitations yet? Don't rush me, don't rush me. <clears throat> Might help if you took the gloves off. <laughs> My hands are cold. Anyway, what's wrong with typing in gloves? I like typing in gloves. Lots of people type in gloves. <laughs> Not in boxing gloves. <laughs> Billy Boy. Now quit flapping, I'm nearly finished. I should think so. 65 invitations to be done. You've taken five hours over it. There you are, finished. Good, that's one done. <laughs> ah, let's see now. Let's have a look at it. Dear Sarah... Oh, Madam. I, I, oh, yes. Yes, it's the first time I've seen it spelt that way. <laughs> yes. M percentage, five-eighths, question mark, A, semicolon M. Look, Tub, I only hit the keys. After that, they're on their own. Now, read the rest of it. You are cordially invited to a dinner party to celebrate the first program of my new radio series, X, 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 I was X. chasing a fly across the paper. <laughs> and the smudge? He didn't quite make it. <laughs> ah, ah, well done. Where are we? Ha. Huh. Dinner will be served at 8.30 sharp. Dress optional, bring your own wipe. <laughs> yes, that should be all right. Look, I think the whole idea is screwy. What do you want to throw a dinner party for anyway? Diplomacy, get them all on my side. National newspapers, the BBC. I'm inviting all the radio critics and the high BBC officials. How high? By the time they leave here, it'll be coming out of their ears. <laughs> Hang around, get them in a good mood. <laughs> That's it. Glowing write-ups in the papers. Tight contracts in my pocket. I'll be made. Famous, success, money, riches, wealth. <laughs> a star. I'll have a little engine put on my tandem. <laughs> Quick, get the invitations finished. Ah, uh, yeah, what about some uh, money for the stamps? Stamps? You don't want to waste money on stamps. <laughs> Give us a pencil. O-H-M-S. <laughs> That'll do. O-H-M-S? Old Ancock's mail swindle. No. <laughs> Another thing, look at all this crockery. Broken plates, cracked saucers, cups with no handles on. I'll give you ten pounds to go out and buy new stuff and look what you bring back. This lot looks as if it came out of a shooting gallery. You've been following me again. <laughs> All right, come on. How much do they cost you? Sixpence the sack, including two pots of glue. Well, that's not too bad. Come on, give us the change. Nine pounds, ninety and six, please. Yeah, well, uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Tom. Let me change. Look, I'm coming to it. Hurry up. Look, we've known each other for many years yes. now. And I'm proud to say oh. that through mutual trust and oh, understanding, yes. our friendship has ripened into close oh. brotherhood. <laughs> Where's me lob? <laughs> After all, ask yourself, what would you have been without me? Rich. <laughs> when you've been in trouble, haven't you always been able to come to me for help? Have I ever refused you advice? All right, all right. Just tell me what you spent it on. Spent it? Spent it? Do you honestly think that I would spend money that doesn't belong to me? Yes. I didn't spend it. I invested it. What in? National savings. Good lad, well done, I. I've misjudged you. What a good idea. National savings. Yeah, it was running at Goodwood, and the jockey said to me... Horse! Look. He's back to horse! <laughs> now, Tony, take it easy. Oh, me money. Me tent knicker. Gone up. 
I don't feel well. I, I'm going to have one of my turns. I'll get it. You will when you get back. Uh -oh. Coming. Hello, Bill. Moira, my favourite woman. Come in, come in. Pull up a coal scuttle and sit down. Thank you, Bill. Hmm, what a place this is. It gets more dusty every time I see it. Dusty nonsense. You could eat your dinner off these floors. I know. I've seen you. <laughs> Honestly, there's so much junk in here, you could get lost. I can't understand it. We have a woman coming every morning. Yes, to hunt for the one that came in the day before. <laughs> well... Where's the owner of this upholstered dustbin? I'm not sure. I think he's having a look at the bathtub. He's not going to have a bath. Nah. He's just seeing how the gin's getting on. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll call him. Hey, uh, hey, Tub. Hello! Somebody for you. Why don't they leave me alone? I've done my time. <laughs> it's Moira. Oh, why didn't you say so? Halfway out of the window with my toothbrush. <laughs> Hello, Moira. Hello, Tony. I... Tony, what have you done to your finger? It's all burnt and blistered. I dipped it in the gin. <laughs> Pretty strong stuff, this. Billy boy, it's the best we've ever made. I wonder what an effect it'll have on people. I don't know, but it's taken the enamel off the bath. <laughs> Just a minute. What are you making this gin for? It's for my dinner party. Dinner party? Yes, didn't Bill tell you? I'm inviting all the radio critics and the aides of the BBC round here to celebrate the first night of my new radio show. Sixty-five of them. Invite them here? Are you mad? You can't ask people like that to a place like this. And why not? Well, look at the state it's in. Even the mice have stopped inviting their friends round. <laughs> Besides, it's much too small. Don't worry, Moira. The size of the flat won't bother us at all. We've already worked out the seating arrangement now. Here's the seating plan here, you see. We get uh, 16 people around the table. And another 16 under the table. That's right. When the pudding comes in, blow a whistle, all change places. <laughs> well, that's 32 taken care of. What about the rest? Well, you'll notice that the trestle tables sort of snake out of the door and along the passage. Thus provided ample eating opportunities for the six arbots with long forks sitting on the banisters. <laughs> Look, Tony, this might be all right for your friends, but these are important people. They're cultivated, well-bred, refined. They're not used to squatting on orange boxes and licking baked beans and gravy off tin plates. They don't have to do any licking. They've got a lump of bread each, haven't they? <laughs> you can't go through with it. It'd be an insult to ask these people along here. Look, I'm not cancelling the party. There's too much at stake. If we don't have it here, we'll have to hold it somewhere else. That's all. Yes, but where? Hey, I know a guy who might be able to help us out there. A friend of mine. Not Edwardian Fred. No. Light-fingered Louis, crew-cut Charlie, Spanish Harry. No, no, I told you. I don't see those fellas anymore. They've closed down the youth club. <laughs> All right, who's going to help us to get a place for the party? A guy I've known for years. The boys tell me he's just opened an estate agent's office. And he's an honest, upright, respectable, law-abiding member of the community. What's his name? Smooth Talk Sydney. <laughs> honest as the day is long. That's not much of a reference in November. <laughs> Look, you've got nothing to worry about. I don't like it. But Sydney's a friend of mine, a trusted friend. All right, all right. We'll go and see your friend. Now what are you doing? So in with pockets up. Well, this is the street. <laughs> what, where Jack the Ripper worked? No. <laughs> Quit worrying. All Sydney's properties in the West End. Then why has he got an office down here in the docks? Well, it's very handy if he ever has to make a quick get a business trip. <laughs> He's got a gangplank running from his back window onto a South American banana boat. Well, here we are. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Yes, we wish to see Mr. James. Certainly. What name shall I give? Bill Kerr, Tony Hancock, and Maura Lister. You'll have to wait. Mr. James is on the... blower. <laughs> Perhaps he'll uh, lend it to you when he's finished with it. <laughs> Thank you.
I'll just go and tell Mr. James you here. Who was uh, that? <laughs> Coat sleeve Charlie. <laughs> All right, Mr. James will see you now. Thank you very much. There's a knob there. Turn it. Won't keep you a minute. Got a new tenant on the phone. Now, look, lady, I told you, I can't let you out of place any cheaper. Four guineas a week and 600 quid for the fittings. What do you mean, what fittings? You've got running water, eh? Well, put a bowl under it. <laughs> what? You want it decorated? I'll send some balloons around. Do it yourself. <laughs> All right, take it to the rent tribunal. Yes, of course I'll be there. I'm the chairman. <laughs> Stupid old moo. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Blimey, where's the other one? What other one? Speak no evil. Sydney! <laughs> Don't you recognize me? It's Billy, Billy the Cur. Oh, Billy boy, how are you? Last time I saw you, you were running a big timber and phosphorus business in the city. Who, Bill? Yes, selling matches outside Mansion House. <laughs> hey, Billy, who's the mugs? Oh, ex nay, please, Sydney. Uh, these are friends of mine. Strange. They look quite normal to me. Hey, there's a nice bit of crackling you brought along with her. It's the best I've seen you with. Introduce me to the young lady. Sure. Sidney James, Moira Lister. How do you do, Mr. James? Pleased to meet you, Moira. Permit me to uh, shake your hand. You won't find a hand round there. <laughs> uh, my girl. Look, Mr. James, we were wondering if you could help us. He's good at helping himself. Tony. But it's my girl. I thought I should take, take him your hands out That's of my cigar box. Now then. Look, it's like this, Sydney. Some of the boys were telling me you'd gone into the estate business. Well, I had to do something. Packed up my last business because of that complaints for the GPO. Complaints? Yes, in the end, I had more mailbags than I did. Now, what can I do for you? <laughs> we want to find a flat for the weekend. Tony is throwing a dinner party and we're looking for somewhere to hold it. Oh, I get it. You want to hire a posh flat so you can kid the guests it's your own place, eh? That's it. You've hit the nail right on the horse of a different colour. <laughs> Well, I think I may have something right up your street. No, thank you. We're trying to get out of here. <laughs> Look, stupid, like, get your hands out of my cigar box. I'm sorry. Now then. We all make mistakes. Let's see what we got on the list. <laughs> Talk Here's to one. Furnish flat over the top of a bank in... No, you can't have that one. Why not? I've got two of the boys in there taking the floorboards up. <laughs> Look. Don't trouble. It, it doesn't seem as if you've got anything. <laughs> we'll, we'll go somewhere else, no, eh? No, don't go away. Don't go away. I'll find you a place if I... Have... Ah! Oh! I told you to keep your hands out of my cigar box. <laughs> you didn't have to slam the lid so hard. Oh, me hand. I think you've got five extra cigars in there now. <laughs> <laughs> now, look. About this flat. I just had a smashing idea. What about a beautiful luxury penthouse apartment in Park Lane? Use of wine cellar, all food supplied, two days, 50 nicker, move in tomorrow. Done. You certainly have been. Eh? Hey? Oh, <laughs> never mind, look. Here's the address, 223 Park Lane. Will you take a check? Check, smack. I want 50 nicker on a nose. All right, hold your head up. One, two, three, four. I'll do him in, so help me. I'll do him in. Get him out of here. Just go in. <laughs> Good health, cab. And don't forget, 223 Park Lane. Charlie. Yes, Mr. James. Take a telegram. Urgent. To Lord and Lady Bayswater, 223 Park Lane. Leave for Scotland immediately. Grandma strained herself while tossing the caber. <laughs> Signed, Father. Oh, what a stroke of genius. <laughs> Well, this is Park Lane. Let's see now. 217, 219, 221. Here we are, 223. Tony, what a beautiful place. It must have cost a fortune. Yes, look on the doorstep. Gold-plated foot scrapers. I told you, Sidney, you'd see us all right. Fancy doubting his honesty when he owns a place like this. I admit I was wrong. I was completely wrong. I feel ashamed of myself for not trusting him. I... I should think so. Now, where's that crowbar he gave us to open the door with because he's lost the key? <laughs> Here it is. Just wedge it in the door. Now. There we are. In. Simple. Mother! Bill! Look! 
I've never seen a place like it in all my life. Fabulous. Yeah, look at the hallway. You could run a bus route through here. It's like a palace. Hmm, I wonder what's in here. Hey, look. It's even got a ballroom. Hey, fellas, this is great. Pardon me. Look at me, fellas, I'm dancing. <laughs> Come out of the airing cupboard. <laughs> Mom, help! Help! Come quickly, help! Where are you? In the dining room, help! We're coming. Tony, what's wrong? My feet. They're gone. <laughs> Come on, my feet. Where's my feet? You're standing on the carpet. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Maura. What a place. Oh. We got everything we need for the party here. Solid silver cutlery, posh dinner services, expensive wine glasses. Yeah, I've seen my glass. I'm having that one over there. No, 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 you're not. That's mine. I saw it first. You're not having it. My party, there's plenty of other glasses. Look, I've taken a fancy to that one. So have I. Let go of it. Give it to me. Let go. Put it Put... down, both of you. That poor goldfish has nearly fallen out three times. <laughs> now, come on, let's get started. There's a lot of work to be done. <laughs> Hey, Tub, what about the food? Who's going to do the cooking? I've seen to that. I've had the Labour Exchange send a French chef round. What's his name? Higgins. <laughs> yes, Pierre Higgins. <laughs> oh, a wonderful chef he is. He's been cooking for many years now as Higgins. A bit old now, a bit past it. I think he was the bloke that scraped the black bits off King Alfred's cakes. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Iggy! Half past seven, lad. Give the ox another towel in the spit. <laughs> Good lad. Now then, when the party begins, we've all got our own little jobs to do. I, of course, being the host, as they say, as they put it. <laughs> we'll be expected to flit about from group to group, indulging in gossip, repartee, chit-chat, and light-hearted banter. How madly gay. <laughs> and Mara? Yes, sir? At ease. <laughs> you, being the hostess, will, of course, be called upon to keep the male guests amused. How you do it's entirely up to you. I leave you with a completely fear. <laughs> Believe me, with some of those producers around, I'm going to need a free hand. Now, you, Bill, you'd like to look after the drinks, wouldn't you? Of course. Well, you're not going to. <laughs> you can be the toastmaster. What do I have to do? Sit in front of the fire with a big fork. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to watch him. He's in there. I, uh... Well, that's that. Tony, we've forgotten something. What? For a party like this, we must have servants. We've got to have at least two butlers, two refined, well-spoken gentlemen. How much is the job paying? <laughs> Sydney. Take it easy, Billy. I just come down to see how you're making out. How do you like the flat? Great, great. I owe you an apology, Sydney. Forget it. So you need a butler, do you? Well, I don't mind helping my friends out of a spot. Where's the monkey suit? Hello, Mr. James. Well, he's wearing it. <laughs> but we still need another butler, though. You called, milady? Oh, it's you, is it? It's too late to argue. The guest will be here any minute now. Sydney, Charlie, go and get the butler's outfits on. Right, come on, Charlie. Tony, they're here. The guests have started to arrive. Right, men. Action stations, Arbus turn. Sydney. Hello. Stand by the door and call the guests' names as they come in. All right. Big head, bacon bone. No, fool! Right. <laughs> they're proper names. I'll stand here and receive me guests as they come through the door. Maura, go and drape yourself over the couch, dear. Higgins, yeah. <laughs> they've arrived. Put the spuds on. <laughs> Bill, switch the radiogram on. Let's have some nice, unobtrusive music in the background. <laughs> oh, that one, oh. Sorry, I'll play the other side. Ah. Uh. Ah, soothing. That's better, yes. 
Right, here we go. Open up. Let him in. Ladies and gentlemen, quiet please. The head of the variety department, BBC. How do you do? I'm so glad you come. Hope you didn't have any trouble parking the bag. <laughs> I'm darling, I'm simply smashed when I tore him up down here today. Of the light program. Oh, pleased to meet you. Have a sausage. <laughs> Put the stick back. We haven't got enough to go wrong. <laughs> My dear, that house is too absolutely fine. Yeah. Hello, <laughs> the treasurer of the BBC. Your Majesty. <laughs> oh, this is indeed an honour. A honour, as they say. How's the good lady? Kids all right? Dig in, lad. Hey, Tony, here come the press boys, all the newspaper critics. Better be careful here. These are the boys who matter. Diplomacy, that's what's needed. And now, Mr. Archibald Main Chumley of the Leamington Spa Observer. And Mr. Rod Carso of the Manchester Post. I'll take your flat hat, shall I? Stick your umbrella in one of your gum boots. <laughs> Don't leave puddles over the carpet. You'll find the tripe and onions on the sideboard. Tony, Tony, I think we'd better start dinner. They're nearly all in. Right. Monsieur Madame, come in. Uh, Dine, we do have a uh, grub up. So I said to at the time, yeah. I said, rank, I said, I'm not having it, I said. Well, you wouldn't. Well, I don't. Yeah. I mean, you know me. I yeah. don't like your attitude, I said. Well, so yeah, you're like that. Have some more asparagus. No, thank you very much. Oh, right. <laughs> As I was saying, I put my foot down. I can see it, yeah. Yes, that's right, because you know me. I mean, I, I'm an easy man to get on with, but I'm roused. Then you're in there. Well, I'm in. Oh, no, I've I mean, you. but I'm... <laughs> you know, I, well, you know, I mean, I'll be led, but I won't be pushed. Well, sure, I, I won't be pushed. No, I've got to agree. <laughs> I said to J. Arthur, Ranky, I said, I call him that, of course. Yes, yes, I, yes. Very <laughs> I, I, <laughs> intimate friends. Of course. Yes, yeah, that's right. I, I, I said, uh, I don't care if you can get Marilyn Monroe to star in the film with me. I'm not doing it, I well, said. I wouldn't. No, I, I shouldn't wouldn't. think so. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> I don't want the bard, I said. I'm not stripping off and bashing that gong for anybody. Wow. <laughs> He was taken aback, I can well, tell you. He was be. taken he aback. Yes. He was taken aback, I can tell you. His eyes went glassy. You could see him. But, yo, oh, glass right up. My, oh, your glass is empty. So it is. Yes, have another quarter of Napoleon brandy. Thank you very much. How's the Director General getting on, eh, lad? What? Run out of caviar, eh? <laughs> Soon get that scene, too. Hold on. Higgins, got another sturgeon. <laughs> hey, Charlie. Yes, Mr. James. Keep that up, boy. We're doing all right here. With the pudding still to come, we've got 65 wallets, 23 watches, 15 cigarette cases, three dozen tie pins, two pairs of socks and a vest. There you are, Tub. I told you that gin had put the party on its feet. Only just, though, they're holding on to each other as it is. Tony, Tony, do something. They've just lit a fire. Well, that doesn't matter. It does when it's on the table. <laughs> Tony, we've got to stop them. They've started throwing things out of the window. Oh, don't tell me. Tell Bill. I can't. He was the first thing to go. <laughs> what the... What's going on here? Hello, a newcomer, eh? He's a bit late for the party, isn't he? Who is he? He looks very distinguished. Monocle, top hat, tails, spats. It's funny, I don't remember inviting the Greyhound Express. <laughs> Blimey, Charlie, Scarpa, quick, look who's just come in. The geezer with a monocle. Who is he? The bloke who owns the place, Lord Bayswater. He couldn't have got a telegram. Come on, we've got to get out of here before the trouble starts. Gangway, mind your backs, thank oh, you. Well, I think you don't know. Well, go on, Tony. The poor man looks absolutely bewildered. Don't be rude. Go and bring him in. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Was I uh, expecting you? Apparently not. 
Will you be so kind as to tell me what's going on here? Hello, we're a bit posh, aren't we? My <laughs> word. <laughs> well, actually, me and the boys here are partaking of a slight booze up. Nice place I got here, isn't it? It used to be delightful. Tell me, who threw jelly over the Rembrandt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> I suppose it was the same bloke what slashed up them goyles. What? <laughs> Oh, look! The carpet's on fire! Oh, my word, so it is, yes. Really must remember to put my foot on them cigar butts. Oh, yes. that carpet costs 700 pounds! All right, don't get aerated. Pour a glass of beer over it. That'll put it out. Oh, no, no! Are you all right? He's gone white. Oh. You're cold, aren't you? Here, jump up on the table, have a warm round the fire. <laughs> yes, soon stoke it up. <laughs> Top of another couple of them Chippendales. My word, we'll have a merry little blaze in no time. <laughs> Why, this is monstrous, young man. Do you realise who I am? I'm afraid your mime wasn't very helpful. <laughs> Would you mind doing it again? I am Lord Bayswater. I own this house, and I'm going to send for the police immediately. Oh, dear. A bill. Uh, more up. <laughs> Run for it. Come back. Come back. Stop your scoundrel. Good night. Who are you? What's your name? Ted Ray. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Hello, Bill. Bill, get this morning's papers? Yep, all here. Oh, good. This is what I've been waiting for. What have the critics said about my new show? Nothing. They haven't even mentioned it. What, mentioned it after that free party I give them? Nope. None of the papers are carrying a radio column this morning. But they have one every morning. Why not today? Why not? Read the stop press. Show me. Last night, the police were called to 223 Park Lane, <clears throat> where 65 hooligans were arrested <laughs> on charges of housebreaking, drunken behavior, and abusive language. <laughs> the police are still looking for a little fat man by the name of Ted Ray. <laughs> Bill? Yeah? Ring up Sydney and book three passages on that South American banana boat. <laughs> That was Hancock's first half hour, featuring the lad himself with Maury Lister, Bill Kerr and Sidney James. Coach Steve Charlie was played by Gerald Campion and Lord Bayswater by Kenneth Williams. Incidental music was composed by Wally Stott, the script was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, and the programme which was recorded was produced by Dennis Main Wilson. Ha, 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 ha.